Welcome back to Go Figure Customs YouTube channel on Custom Painting 101. Uh, maybe this is episode five now. I don't even know because uh, what we're doing, what I'm doing right now, is I'm processing the video as I finish up the figure. Everybody's stuck inside because of the COVID-19 stuff. Uh, I'm actually home on leave from work, um, so it's kind of like being stuck inside because I really can't go anywhere um, or do anything because the weather's shit outside as well. So, yay. Um, so I um, started this project a long time ago um, and then just kind of blew it off the last few times I've been home and just like, meh, just didn't feel like finishing it up. Um, but since I got nothing else to do and you don't either, I figured I would get this done so you'd have something to watch. Nothing worse than dropping a part of a custom and not being able to find it again. It's like it just friggin' disappears. So I think actually what we're gonna do is put the piece back on. Of course, a lot of that paint just came off on my fingers when I picked it up. But it's dry enough that I can go start going over it again. And then just light coats. Uh, one of the things um, I don't have problems with with it uh, with the paints that I use, but uh, I think problems paints that I've seen with the problems that problem I was going to give you advice on how to avoid is bubbles. Every once in a while, you'll get a paint that will have bubbles in it where you're painting on. Um, I think Testers was the one that liked to bubble up while you're painting. Uh, if it starts to do that, just brush the bubbles towards the end, towards the edge to get them off. Uh, let it dry and then start over again. So nice, thin, light coats. See, I got a little bit of paint, flush paint on the edge of his collar, so I'll have to go back and fix that. I'm going to pop his head back on there. All right, so I can still see some of the gray through, on, especially on his uh, right arm there. But it's still not dry enough that I'm ready to hit it with the second coat. So we're going to let that dry a little bit and we'll come back to that. Okay, while we're waiting for that skin tone to dry, we're going to uh, do a couple more, uh, hit a couple more of the details that are still waiting to be painted. Uh, he's got uh, two carabiners, one in the front, one in the back. We're going to paint those. I'm using Citadel Layer uh, Iron Breaker. Um, talk about painting guns at this point in time too because we're gonna give him this uh kind of snub m4 um so there's two different ways that i've liked to paint guns um either paint it uh black or light black uh when i say light black i use tamaya c blue uh and then dry brush a, a silver, but not a silver, but like this darker, it's a darker silver. I'll dry brush this darker silver over it. Or I will paint the whole gun, this darker silver to begin with. And then do multiple, multiple, multiple coats of a wash over it. And it's definitely a lengthy process. So it depends on how much time and effort I want to put into it. Um, because it takes a lot of coats and you have to wait for it to dry each time you do a layer. And it does take a while for those to dry. Uh, but I think it gives it a better effect when you do paint it all silver, that darker metallic silver. 
and then go over it with the, the washes. Uh, I like that a lot better. So it has more realistic look to it. All right. So I've got his D-rings painted silver. Sorry, I probably should have painted that where you could see, but I'm not doing anything uh, spectacular. I'm taking that same 10 brush. I might have used a smaller brush and then just painting, a lot, painting that silver on the D-rings. Uh, I haven't decided what color I'm going to paint this yet because I don't even know what it's supposed to be. I think it's just Greeple's sculpted in. So uh, I'm probably going to actually you know what I know what we're going to do. We're going to do the technique that I was just talking about. I'm going to paint that this darker silver. And then we're going to go over it with the black wash or Nulin oil, as it says on the bottle. And again, this is where I'm a little more careful about how and where I paint. A bit better on the brush control because some of this is already done. I mean, like finished done. You know, the layers on his pants and his vest. I don't want to have to go back and touch those up if I don't want to. Because if you think about it, it's at least three different colors right now because there's that base coat and then there's the wash and then there's the dry brush. So depending on where you have a painting error, you may have to go back and hit that spot to, again three different times just to touch up uh, a painting error. And I've had to do that. I'm not fond of doing it, but um, it's a thing. Uh, another area that I'm going to hit uh, while I'm waiting for that layer of paint to dry. Uh, you can't see it, unfortunately, in the video. The top of his belt, you can still see gray. Very thin, probably less than a millimeter. Um, but when you start getting decent paint applications like this and it all starts to blend together um, it becomes readily apparent where you've missed paint what you haven't painted and actually the paint top the top of his uh, thigh pout, uh, thigh rigs need to be addressed too so I'm going to do that while we're waiting here uh, sorry uh, so yeah, I'm hitting, still taking that 10 brush. I probably should use a smaller brush for this. Uh, and I'm hitting the tops of the belts in the holster, or the rig, thigh rigs. Because a lot of the stuff on the thigh rigs is green from where we uh, slopped on the uh, base coat. And I'm just using the, the layer the, the base coat color that we used to paint. And I'm just touching up the tops of belts and rigs. Oh, let's see, I might have gotten a little bit, and you gotta be really careful because then you'll get it into the pants and then that'll need to be touched up. Seem like I need to touch up a glove too. All right. Always be, when you get this far along, always be cognizant of where you're, and especially when you're doing, so I'm doing multiple touch-ups. So I'm, I'm touching up, I'm painting the D-rings, I'm painting the, this green ball on the back. Um, I'm doing skin tones. So I've got wet paint in multiple places. Be cognizant and cognizant of where your wet paint is so you don't get fingerprints in it and you don't smear that paint. 
Uh, a lot of times I'll hold it like this, bottom of the feet, top of the head. Um, not to worry about the bottom of the feet, but sometimes I'll get paint rubs off the top of the head. Uh, uh, under the vest, bottom edge of the vest is one of the places that likes to uh, not get painted frequently as well. So when you get this close to being done, start looking. Uh, switch to my uh, old man glasses here. Start looking for um, paint errors. So, and I, I by paint errors, I, I mean like there's a one little tiny drab of brown on the shirt. Where it's clear that's the vest color. So I'm going to get a little bit of the base color that I used. And you can hear the wife yelling at the puppy. And I'm going to dab just enough to cover that. Which it didn't. sure you don't get too much paint on your brush and just dab it up just a little dab enough to cover any areas where there's there's a little spot on the back where the vest hit where I was painting in the vest. The color for the vest got on the shirt. So this is kind of one of the final steps. It's just eyeball your figure, head to toe, and find those little painting errors. And that's why I'll use um, my magnifying glasses like these uh, because a lot of times these are hard to see with the, the naked eye but if you take really nice pictures of your figures they'll show up and boy there's nothing that annoys me faster than taking it a nice picture of what I think is my perfect figure only to see this like glaring paint mistake and even though it's only microscopic in real life when you're holding the figure and you might not even notice it when you're taking a like one-to-one -one picture of it it sticks out all right and uh, usually I won't go back and do like three different layers on uh, touch-ups it's just enough to hit it with the base coat because I'm not painting a large surface. I'm just touching up minor areas. All right, I think that's all the green, although this helmet strap needs to be done. So. that probably should switch to a smaller brush but I'm not going to uh, And this is where brush control does come into to play significantly. This is a fine detail work. And like I said, if you don't get it all, it becomes, uh, becomes readily apparent very quickly because that gray will stand out, especially with darker colors. 
I didn't get the like back edge of it and it's noticeable. He's got a microphone coming off his mask too. This balaclava. So that is gonna be impossible to show you on this video, unfortunately, but he's got a microphone sculpted. You can kind of see it raised there onto his balaclava. I've painted that in um, what's probably the sea blue. So to get something to stand out, I'm gonna have to use like straight black for that. Where is my straight black? Here it is. Uh, I'm using Citizen uh, aband Abandoned Black. Um, I'm not a big fan of painting straight black uh, because it is one of those paints that will cake up pretty quickly. So I will take I'll load up my brush a little bit and I'll dab some on a surface like a, my I have a piece of wood big piece of wood on top of my desk here um, so I'll dab some onto that surface and then I'll get just a little bit of water in my brush and then water down the paint so it's not so thick not to the point where it's a wash but enough to Thin it out so it doesn't cake up again, avoiding that melted crayon syndrome. And I'm just gonna put a quick swipe on that. And that should be enough to make that stand out. No, eh, not quite. It doesn't quite stand out, but then again, you know, it really shouldn't either. Because they're both, this, should be the same color. You know, if we if I'd have done his balaclava in a, a green, that, that uh, microphone would stand out because I painted it black and that would look nice. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So one of the other things that we need, that I'm going to do to this helmet, um, is he has goggles on his helmet. Uh, then they're sculpted on. Normally I would like to use the old BBI goggles. I don't think I have any laying around here to show you. Um, from the old um, like Marine and Navy SEAL figures and Army figures um, because they they're clear and you can they're transparent. You can see through the lenses. These are not. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take uh, some chrome silver from Tamaya. Uh, the thing about Tamaya paints I've mentioned previously in other videos is it needs to be stirred, not shaken. And I use a paint stir from Badger. It's like 12 bucks. I think that's the second one I've had in, geez, I don't know, almost 20 years. So they'll last, um, but it needs to be shaken. I'm sorry, it needs to be stirred, not shaken. What we're gonna do, load up the brush with a little bit of the silver, and we're gonna paint the lenses silver. Well, that seems, we're gonna do kind of a light, as light of a coat as we can. Counterintuitive because might seem counterintuitive because the lenses wouldn't be silver. I've got a neat little trick here for you. We're gonna do as soon as this paint dries. All right, so there I've painted the lenses silver, but we're not done. Well, we're done for the moment on that. All right, so I got a lot of stuff drying, actually. The skin tone's probably dry by now. See, now this is the point where if you've mixed your paint for skin tones, 
you're screwed because it's probably all dried out by now. This is one of the reasons I don't like to mix skin tones. Unless you've mixed a lot and it's still wet. Luckily, the stuff I've dabbed on my palette, I just add a little water to it and it's fine. So that's why if you're going to mix it, mix your paints for skin tones, mix a lot of it. We're going to do another light coat of skin. That's a little too much, a little too thick. It should be thick enough to cover, but not thick enough to see brush strokes. If you can see brush strokes, thin it out again and do another coat. Not too bad. Get his neck real quick. arm. There's a lot of paint in that brush. So I'm going to dab a little bit here, dab a little bit there, and then brush it out to thin it out so it coats evenly. Don't want to see brush strokes in my paint. little spot between his watch and his glove. Oof. Oh, I can see a brush stroke there. Alright. Alright, so what's left is his watch. Uh, I don't know that the stuff on the back is dry yet to show you what we're going to do there. So, we got a lot of stuff drying right now. We're going to have to let him sit for probably a good 20 to 15 minutes to let all that paint dry before we can do the next part. Which, I mean, the next part is just continuing to do uh, touch-ups touch and finishing them up. Uh, about all we have left to do that's, like, big... Uh, is his eyes, and those are going to be really hard on this figure. Um, and eyes are not something that I am um, not my best subject, but uh, I will tell you how I do them. And we'll do that in the next video. Um, kind of left off touching up uh, paint errors. Uh, we got that done, so really about the only thing that I have left to do on him is uh, one of the techniques that I was going to tell you about uh, doing his goggles. And we're going to pretty much do the same technique, just a little heavier on that little greeble on his back. And then I got to do his uh, watch uh, and then his eyes. And then I'm uh, going to do his gun. So what we need to do now for the silver on his goggles. So we're going to this Nolan oil, which is the wash. And we're going to use, gosh, I don't have a, I wish this would stay open a little better, but it doesn't. Yeah, that just went everywhere. God damn it. All right, so I'm going to use a smaller, might be too small of a brush. recently found um, I mentioned the the paint uh, the army painters paint uh, they've got a nice little set of three brushes 
that I really like. There's a fine detail brush, uh, and then this brush is really, this particular brush, it's uh, called the Regiment brush. Uh, it's really nice for washes. And then they've got another brush called Small Dry Brush, and it's actually really good for uh, laying down base coats, regardless of what they're saying about dry brushing. Uh, so I'm going to take the brush I like for my wash. I'm going to load that up. And I'm going to go over that silver. And I'm going to go over it pretty heavily. More heavily towards the edges than in the center. And I'm just, once I've got it on there, I'm going to dab it in places to get it a little thicker. So it's kind of an uneven coat. And there it is. It's hard to see because it kind of still looks silvery in the video. It'll come out in the uh, pictures that I'll take when I'm done. Actually, it probably needs a second coat after that dries. Um, we're also going to hit the little carabiners with this too. So I'm going to do a wash of that little grebo on the back. And do those little carabiners. And carabiner up front. All right. So now that those are done, yeah. So that the goggles do need another layer on there. And I didn't really get that edge very well. With the wet brush, with the it's kind of the downside to the wash is uh, if you're using it to basically what I'm doing is turning it into a different paint by washing it repeatedly. Um, it's a really neat effect. Uh, I learned it on YouTube actually. I'm actually going to do it to the helmet too. Just going to do a a black run the black wash over his helmet real quick. And I'm going to just dab it on unevenly. Because remember, a lot of things, nothing is one solid color in real life. Okay, that is going to have to sit and dry. There is nothing else I can do about that until that dries. And I'm going to have to do repeated washes to that little greeble in the back, and I'm probably not going to shoot that as part of a video. I'm just going to do it, and then I'll show you. Um, uh, I think the skin on the arm is fine. It's a little light. A little lighter than I'd prefer. But, like I said, I'm just painting out of the bottle this one time. Um, what else? Uh, the eyes. Oof. So he's got a little strip there where there's skin. And then, so I'm going to use the flesh tone. And I'm going to paint that whole strip, the whole area around in there, that flesh tone. Not much point in showing this on the video, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I had a way to video stuff in you know fine detail video but i don't now i gotta make sure i don't hit any of the wet brushing any of the wet spots my glasses and try not to get it on the balaclava which is going to be a chore So I am just painting around, just painting the inside of the bullet coat. The skin that's visible is what I'm painting. And that's probably going to need to dry and get a second coat. So I'll describe to you how I do the eyes. So I'll do the base, I'll do the base coat of skin and then 
in the area where the eye is, I'll take a little dab of white on the smallest possible brush I, I have. I've heard people using toothpicks for this. Uh, I've tried that, I've not had any success with it. And then I'll paint the white part of the eye, let that dry, and then I'll go in uh, with, again, the same real fine brush. I usually try and keep one brush just for eyes and it usually only lasts like two or three times at most before it's just, it doesn't have that fine tip that I need anymore. And then I'll just dab in an eye, the color for the eye. Uh, the trick is to, number one, getting it round, because if you, when you really start getting in there, and when you're dabbing in, it will be uneven and that's noticeable. Um, so the, the trick is to kind of making a semi-circle because if you look at your eyes, your eyelids cover the top of your, um, the colored part of your eye. So there's just a semi-circle visible. So you want to paint a little semi-circle if you're able to. I mean, this does, this is fine brush control and this does take a lot of practice and I'm not even good at it. Uh, and then I will go back with the flesh flesh tone and I'll paint uh any um of the of the white or the the colored part of the eye um that has gone outside the lines as as I've been saying um I usually kind of a I won't say it's an easter egg but it is kind of an easter egg uh all my figures have blue eyes since I have blue eyes uh, it's kind of like my little hidden signature the only time I don't follow that is if one it's a specific person so like when I've done my Arnold Schwarzenegger or my Tom Cruise or um you know my my customs from um Dukes of Hazzard or uh what else Sicario so like no actors you know doing real people I will paint the eyes that those people have the color of the eyes that they have. Um, the only other time I don't give them uh, blue eyes is, of course, if it's racially inappropriate. So, like, if I'm doing um, a Jim Rhodes custom or a Roadblock custom, I'm not going to give them blue eyes because they wouldn't have blue eyes. Uh, otherwise, everybody gets blue eyes because it's... Or redheads. I'll give redheads green eyes. Um, it's just kind of like a signature of mine. Everybody gets blue eyes. Uh, paint the watch. The watch is the only thing that's left. Color do I want to do the watch in? I don't really want to do it in black. We're going to do it in green. I'm just going to pick a green at random. Uh, I'm using Lauren Green, which is one of the colors that we have used on this figure. So, it should be match just fine and it does have like a watch face and I'm going to do that in a different color so I'm just going to paint the edges and the watch band in this Lauren green uh, and then I'm going to use uh, a different color for the watch face So just painting around the edges of the watch. Which is a lot harder than it may seem. These are very fine details. And here comes the thundering herd. They, I have a bag of pretzels here and they all want a pretzel. Two of the three dogs know there's a bag of pretzels here. I think if the third dog knew there was pretzels here, he'd be here too. So probably gonna have to go back with the flesh tone. And uh, 
if this, if I've missed, if I've over, if I've colored outside the lines while I'm painting the watch, I'll have to go back over with the flesh tone. That actually looks pretty good. I don't think I got it in the flesh area at all. Yeah, a little bit of flesh on the watch still. See, the, when you really get into the fine details, when you really start painting these fine details, it's the stuff like tops of belts and tops of holsters and tops of straps. Once, when they are not painted, it becomes readily apparent. You don't notice it on the regular figure because it's usually the same color. They don't usually paint those fine details. Or if they do, they do a real good job of it. Yeah, let's see. I got, I got into the skin tone there. So I'm going to have to go in with the skin tone and paint that. Touch up that mistake there. Uh, do I have some that's still wet? I do have some that's still wet. Oh, just going back in with the flesh tone. Is the helmet still wet? Nope, the helmet's dry. Okay. Alright. I can see brush strokes in that paint though. So I thinned out my, I got a little water in there. I thinned out the paint and I'm just gonna brush that water into the paint. It will thin it out until it's even. Now this guy's eyes might just be damn near impossible to paint because they're so small. Uh, usually when they're really small and they're really like damn near impossible to paint I'll get a, a flesh colored wash and I will just paint around the eyes and it will look like shadows and I may actually do that on this to so I don't have to do eyes on this guy because they are really tiny uh, flesh tone wash uh, no that's sepia uh, that's sepia too Actually read this anymore. These things leak like crazy. Reichland flesh shade, I think is what that says on there. So that's what I'm gonna do on this. Instead of painting eyes, I'm just gonna hit it with a um the flesh wash. It's kind of a cheat, but it doesn't look bad either. And I've actually seen production figures where they've done that. They won't paint the eyes, they'll just put a, a dark wash in there. And it works on this because his head is number one underneath a balaclava and number two it's under that's underneath a helmet. So you might not be able to see his eyes to begin with. So well, it's real hard to see, but like I said, we'll get some of this detail uh, in the pictures because we're just about done with this guy. Uh, I think the wash has dried on the lens of his goggles. So let's go back and hit that one more time with the black wash. There we go. 
And now, instead of silver, it just looks like dark, darkened glass in there. So that's the little tip or trick for painting uh, lenses that are not translucent or transparent, is painting silver and then going over it a couple times with a dark wash. All right, um, I think the only thing that is left is his gun. We're at 18 minutes. Um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna primer this now. Um, to primer it, I will use a hemostat holding the uh, handle where the figure will hold it. I'll primer it, uh, and then we're gonna go over it with the um, iron breaker. If I want, I can, uh, after the primer's dry, I can primer the handle. Um, most times I won't bother painting the handle where the figure holds it because it's not readily visible and taking it in and out of the figure's hands, you're going to get paint rubs anyway. So there really isn't much of a point, uh, in my opinion, of painting handles. If I was going to do this for a commission, I probably would, but I would just say, you know what, you, uh, if you switch out the guns too frequently, you're going to get paint rubs. Um, but that's just personal preference. Uh, so let's pause it here while I go primer this gun. All right, well, I lied. I really thought we'd be able to get this done in the sixth video, but it's already at 40 minutes, which is 10 minutes past what I'd like to do for the 30 minute time limit. Um, and there are still a couple things that I need to go over. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pause it here and we're going to pick it up in a seventh video. Sorry, it's going a little longer than I had planned, but this was the whole intention of this series was to do it start to do the painting tutorial start to finish. So if you really want to learn how to do this, it's really worth it to kind of break it up and make as many videos as needed to show you all of the techniques. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the seventh and absolutely the final video in this where uh, I will go over the last couple of things that I need to discuss. And since there's only a couple minutes worth of, of painting left, that's where I will put the high res pictures of this figure once it's done. So you can see what it looked like before because I'm going to pose it with one of the uh, Joy Toy figures and uh, with one of the original figures, uh, unpainted uh, The I'm going to use it, put it next to the figure that I used as a base figure and uh, just see what it looks like done. Um, so stay tuned. Hopefully that video, by the time you're watching this, that video is already up on this channel. So take a look at it.